few minutes technology preview four. This preview went live about two weeks ago on the lab, Autonomous Labs website. Um, this week it will be available in 14 languages. So um, all major Autonomous products um, come in 14 languages and Fusion is now available uh, localized in those languages to make it easier for, for customers to try it out and give us feedback. Um, there's a forum site right on the lab's website that lets customers give us feedback and there's an email address where customers have been giving us a lot of feedback. We collect all that feedback, we talk to customers, we interview customers, and it helps us drive the technology preview forward. We release them about every six months as we learn and make changes. So this release here it highlights some significant new enhancements, particularly around ease of use, which I'm going to show you today. So to do that, let's just go ahead and get started um, with a basic, simple sketch. I made this sketch beforehand um, in order to save a little bit of time this morning. But it's a typical design, it's like a little airfoil. This is actual, an actual customer in the maker market that I have interviewed and worked with. He built an executive toy. It's kind of like one of those little balancing people machines that spins. But in this case, it's a, it's a true airfoil, and the airfoil creates lift as you spin it, and it causes the, the little executive toy to spin and, and oscillate up and down. It's a neat little story directly in the market that Buzz is talking about. And some of the enhancements that we've done in this release really speak to uh, this, this particular type of user using the tool. If you haven't seen Fusion before, um, it's a very simple and easy to use 3D modeling tool. One of the things that we've done to try to make it really easy for non-trained professionals is if you watch non-trained professionals work, they just click on things. And then if clicking on things brings up menus, they'll click on those things to learn what they can do. And Fusion tries to mirror this. And if you hover over a command and you don't know what it does, it shows you a tooltip. And if you hover a little bit longer, that tooltip expands and actually gives you content directly out of the help system. So right here, within just a few seconds, kind of a natural gesture that I might do, I get a lot of information that I would have to go dig around in a help system to get at in, in a more traditional user interface. So you can see here, a lot of attention being paid to, paid to learnability. Let's just go ahead and start doing an extrude. And all of the user interface for Fusion um, is trying to be put right at the cursor point. You've actually seen this user interface migrating into other applications. 3D Studio Max has some of these in canvas tools. Inventor has quite a lot of these in canvas tools. And that's technology that was developed as part of Fusion in the Labs program and then came out in our professional um, products as we felt it was more mature and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, continue to, to work on this extrude and show you um, how everywhere, if I just click, um, contextual commands appear and, and let me continue to work through my workflow. So in this case, I'll just grab this edge. What can I do with an edge? Um, I might want to uh, fill it or chamfer that edge. Those commands immediately come up at my cursor. I can type in the size if I know exactly the size that I want to work with. Now, I've made a little bit more detail on my airfoil one of the things we heard from customers that they, they needed more was more tools for shape description, more tools to deal with imported data. So that's led us to take all of the work we've done with 3D solids and now add 3D surfaces into Fusion. This is the major enhancement that has been added into Fusion for Technology Preview 4. So right along with all my solid tools, I have a very simple set of surfacing tools. And in this case, what I'm going to do is show you a neat little trick that a customer showed me where I'm going to offset some, a surface here to continue my design. And I don't exactly like where that surface is, so the next thing I probably want to do is, is move it. So let's just pick the Move tool and grab it. Now notice as I'm working, everything that I'm doing is right at the center of my screen, is right at my point of focus, and it's almost anticipating the next step that I want to do in presenting the tools that make sense for the workflow I'm in. And that's part of the feedback and watching customers learn the tool, we've really been able to streamline the user interface around users' tasks. It makes it really easy for me to maybe realign this, um, this piece of uh, triad UI so I can position it exactly where I need it. And now let's just go ahead and lift it up a little bit and rotate it. <coughs> you can see everything's happening with real-time previews right, right on the screen. Maybe about 15 degrees. Now that I have that surface, we can do a pretty, pretty nice little um, trick here. Let's go ahead and just build a loft from this face. We want it to be smooth and connect to that face. And instantly, we get a full preview ready to go to continue my, my modeling. Now, I don't like that flat end, so I want to show a little bit of uh, one last little bit of, of work around how the surfaces work. 
these tools need to be really easy and you need to be able to bounce back and forth between them. We want to take all of the burden off the user, put all of the responsibility on the design tool to make it to make it easy to work with. So what if it was as easy as simply saying, you know, what I what I need to do now is work with my surfaces. That that particular face probably needs to be uh, tilted a little bit to make a, a nicer end shape. So we'll just go ahead and directly use a little bit too fast. Right, I'm going to go ahead and start and get to the end of my presentation because I'm a little bit over time. Okay, I'll do that one more time. Let's just do a move of this face. Now, I, I want to put a nice rounded end on this, so let's just go right into the surfacing tools and just say, I'm dealing with a solid now, we can see the solid data is right here, showing me what I'm working with. As soon as I delete it, it instantly turns into a surface, but all of the same tools work. Um, everything works exactly the same way, whether I'm solids or surfaces. There's no responsibility for the users to change the way they're thinking about the design, they just keep moving forward. So in this case, we'll just pick on that edge to see what we can do. Uh, look at this, it's very nice, I can put a patch on the end, I also want that to be smooth. Now let's stitch all of this back together. You'll notice the solid node disappeared when I turned it into a surface model. Right now we'll just go back and pick all of these surfaces again, automatically showing that the boundary between those surfaces is nice and tight with a green preview. If it was bad, it would show with a red preview, and you even highlight where, where the, there was an issue in the model. And I'll go ahead and say OK, and now I'm back to a solid. Now that's kind of an interesting workflow for people who like geometry. But the thing that's really important about what I showed you here is I just went forward with my task. I didn't have to understand a lot about how the tools work. The tools helped me through the process. The tools presented logical information, um, very easy for me to understand. And I stepped through what is a pretty complex geometry problem, um, but looks really simple when I work through it with the tools that are here. And that's what we're trying to deliver, is, is ease of use that customers have never seen before. And that ease of use is more than just geometry modeling. It can also apply to working with materials. So let's do something really simple with this model to wrap up um, the demonstration. Let's go right into materials and, and look at how we fundamentally change even the way customers work with materials. I get in the canvas a material chooser. I can pick which material I might like. I'm going to get real-time previews as I look at these different materials. I like ABS plastic, but the plastic I want to use has some texture and maybe some color. So let's switch from setting the physical properties to the visual properties. We're using plain English here. Um, I want to go ahead and set some plastic um, texture on this, so we'll pick a fine texture. It's a little bit coarser than I want, so again, everything is directly in the canvas in real time. We'll set a nice coarse texture, and we can just play with what color we might want it to be, a nice little cream color. So we've really looked at the entire customer experience. We've asked customers, uh, what is it that they need to make the tool really easy to learn and we learn? And we've taken all that feedback and tried to really significantly change the ease of use and ease of learning in our design technologies. And this is just a short glimpse of some of that technology. Thank you.